Now it's time to kick back and watch the sunset and have a beer. <laughs> or cook. <laughs> yeah, or some people have to cook. But can you please stop complaining so the rest of us can have an enjoyable sunset, please? Sorry about that. Alright guys, well, today we are on our way to Big Creek. That's where the port captain's office is. That's where the customs and immigration is. You know, you've got to renew your visa every 30 days. I heard this process takes two hours from getting on the hokey pokey. So, that's not too bad. That's great, yeah. I don't want to get my hopes up though, because anytime I've had high expectations about paperwork, <laughs> I always get smacked in the face with reality. <laughs> yeah, right. We want to go to Guatemala ultimately, but what we want to do is go to the Sapadilla Keys for a week first. And the Sapadilla Keys are right on the way to Guatemala. So what we want to see if we can do is see if we can check out of the country here and yet legally go to the Sapadillas for a week on our way to Guatemala. So just see if they've got some sort of a section in our paperwork where they can write like, we'll be spending a week in the Sapadillas. Yeah, like stopover. So we'll, we'll see, we'll go talk to the port captain now and see what happens. We do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. That is a funny name, do the hokey pokey. You know what I mean by Pokey pokey right uh, there. Comment down there. Let's do that. Comment down. Pokey. There are children watching this. <laughs> no silly feet. Close the door behind you. Don't worry, I won't try to find you. But don't come crying to me. This is like a roller coaster ride. Like, even if you don't want to get to Mango Creek, this would be a fun thing to do. And it's We need to go there, get Immig the paperwork. Immigration, yeah. water authority, everything. Yeah. yeah. But we do that for a third release for the road trip. Third release? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good thing. Wait okay. for you, I'll bring you back. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, okay. man. Cool. Since you've been gone. You walk there in the I got some new stuff going All right. on. Found the immigration office. Let's do it. So we went to the immigration office and it looks like they didn't have any receipts today. So I don't think we'll be able to get um, our visa, which means we probably won't be able to get the appropriate paperwork at customs. Um, we're going to check out the Port Authority here today to see if we can get any paperwork done today. And we also have those some questions that we wanted to ask. Um, so we'll go ahead and ask our questions here. Yesterday we went and talked to the customs guy. Basically, if you check out of the country, you have 24 hours to leave the country. And so that would mean that legally we couldn't sail to the Sapadillas after checking out. But, you know, if you did it, like there's no one in the Sapadillas that would check your paperwork. Like he literally said that. And I told him that I had been concerned because there is a, uh, like a naval base there. And uh, so I said, well, what about the Navy? And he said, no, the Navy doesn't do any like uh, customs or immigration stuff. So anyway, He's basically saying like, you know, the rule is that you can't do it, but if you did it, you know, you wouldn't have to worry about any sort of enforcement, so. So, we decided to just check out today, and we actually couldn't do any of our paperwork yesterday because the immigration office didn't have any, like, receipts or paper for receipts. I'm not really sure what that means, but apparently it happens quite frequently. Yeah. <laughs> so, we're gonna try first thing this morning and uh, fingers crossed they'll have receipts today so we can check out and leave tomorrow. All right, heading back off to Mango Creek. Immigration check. Now we're going to Customs and the Port Authority. Last stop, Port Authority. So 
we are checked out of the country, more or less ready to head to the Sapodilla Keys. The plan was for us to go this morning, but all yesterday and all last night it rained and thundered and lightning. And I was hoping that it was gonna clear up today and it's starting to, but there's still a handful of thunderclouds looming around. If you look over that way, it's just beautiful. Like the sky looks perfect. And then you've got that big boy over there and that's the direction we need to go in. The reason I'm hesitant to not go today, not because I'm worried about like the wind and the rain necessarily, but because the Sapodilla Keys have pretty complicated entrances. The, they're not charted all that well. There's lots of coral heads and lots of like coral that you need to avoid. And so our cruising guide specifically says you need good light to get into those anchorages. Even though it looks like this is all clearing up, there's a chance that that big guy would still be there over the Sapodillas and just basically not letting sun through, you know, raining, it would just make for poor visibility. And that's what I'd be concerned about. That's all downwind, so there's a chance that that's moving away from us, but it's hard for me to know that for sure. If we don't leave in the morning, we shouldn't go there at all because we wanna arrive there while the sun is still high in the sky. If we arrive at like four or five in the afternoon, then you've got bad visibility again. You need the sun to be up high so you can see the coral features really well. We have to decide with the information we have right now if we want to go. So, what do you think, bud? I think we should just go tomorrow. Yeah. We already didn't go yesterday, so now we're two days behind on water and trash and provisioning. So I could go ashore and do some all three of those to kind of get us back to ready to go tomorrow, fully topped up on everything. All right, well, let's just go tomorrow. Stupid, big, dark cloud. Thanks a lot, a-hole. Okay, well, it is noon, and behind me is the remnants of that big cloud that we were seeing earlier this morning. It's just totally dissipating. Today would have been a perfect day to go. That's one of the big challenges I think of cruising is you're always sort of dabbling between like being overly cautious and overly conservative with your choices and then being overly risky with your choices. Um, and it's really hard to decide which is which, especially if you're like pretty new to it, you don't have a lot of experience. I think it's a pendulum and we're on the side of it where we're being extremely conservative right now because we had a couple of bad experiences with weather. So I'm sure as we cruise, like it's just reacting to a bad situation and being conservative for a long time and then being conservative for too long and then taking a risk and maybe it goes well, maybe you get shot down, you know? I think you're just we're just always reacting to what's the last emotional experience, whether it be positive or negative. The better thing for us at this stage of our cruising career, where we don't have a whole lot of experience with this stuff, is to err on the side of caution. It's probably good that we have a certain amount of pragmatic paranoia, because that's how we'll stay out of trouble in general. But at the same time, if you're not willing to take on a certain level of risk, then you'll never leave the dock. And so, the point is, is that there is a middle ground um, and trying to find that is a challenge. Hopefully we get good weather tomorrow and we'll head over there tomorrow. What you doing there, buddy? Oh, I am getting our cruising spinnaker out. And we're gonna be going downwind in probably like, you know, 10 to 12 knots of breeze today. So this will be a perfect sail for today. A lot of the time, it's super lame not having a uh, furled head sail. All of our sails are hank on. So you can see I've got our uh, working jib lashed to the upper lifeline here. This is the old school way of doing it. They basically have like a working jib and a Genoa lashed to the lifelines on either side. Super inconvenient, like having to set them up, hank them on, and then flake them, and then put them in the bag and put them back in the locker every time we sail. 
is pretty lame. Um, but what's cool about it is it basically keeps me from being lazy, so the boat sails better for it, for it. And so for instance, if we just had a Genoa on a furler, then uh, we'd probably just use it, right? I wouldn't bother getting the spinnaker out. But because we don't have that, I basically, it's just as much work for me to get the Genoa out now that I'm realizing it's gonna be such a light day. So instead of doing that, I get the spinnaker out. So basically we have exactly the correct sail for every occasion. All right, my sexy sailing outfit on. Jordan's getting the anchor up. We're going to try to sail off the anchor. Our boat neighbors over there are from Key West. They are going to get a little bit of drone footage for us, which is gonna be exciting. All right, let's do it. going on out there buddy well it is a light day um, there's not a lot of wind but there is a lot of squalls all over the place <laughs> so now the decision is do we want to keep sailing or do we want to motor sail the wind is really light we've got the spinnaker up and we've got the full main up and we're just chugging along at about you know three and a half to four knots we could put the mizzen up at this point too and i'd be happy with this if we were on like a passage or something but the fact is it's only 20 miles away so if we motor sail we'll be there in under four hours if we do this it'll take us a long time if the wind doesn't pick up i think it will but ah it's so squally i think we should just douse the spinnaker and motor sail this is going to take us too much time it's going to be too much of a hassle and we've got the diesel yeah let's just do it when i douse the spinnaker i just take the line that attaches to the tack that line runs through a block that connects to our anchor roller and if i just let that line fly then the luff of the sail will just fly forward and kind of luff and that'll give me a real nice angle to uh, pull the sock over it. Can you run and uh, release the uh, spinnaker sheet? Mm -hmm. I found that the simplest thing to do, especially if we're underway, is just let the whole thing go into the V-berth. So when we fly the spinnaker, we'll make sure that we take the sheets and the bedding off of the V-berth so that we can do this and not get our stuff all wet or salty. All right, there you go. All right, let's motor sail. I hate motor sailing, you know? I love the fact that we can do it, and this is a perfect scenario in which I think it's a legitimate choice because here we are, 20 miles away from these awesome islands. We can either mess around in Placencia for a couple of days until we actually get some wind, or we can just motor over there. Four hours of motoring, about two gallons of diesel, which here costs about six dollars a gallon so 12 bucks and we can get to the sapodillas now as opposed to in like two or three days so that's a good trade in my book but again the sailor in me hates this all right well we've been motor sailing for almost an hour now dead ahead of us in our direction there's like no clouds so fingers crossed it stays that way <laughs> uh, anyways i'm getting a little hungry so I'm getting ready to make a little snack. Something that I do for short passages is to just kind of pre-make a little lentil salad or bean salad. I went ahead and cut up uh, in my collapsible Tupperware onions, tomato, garlic, celery, um, lime, and uh, olive oil. And then last night I made some lentils. You can see them in there. 
Uh, and then I have a can of chicken. I'm gonna go ahead and bust that open. Just kind of mix that all up in here and then feast from here. Here you go, fishies. Research on Belize before we came here, read books, looked up a lot of stuff on the internet, as well as a really great resource has been um, the Belize Cruisers Net Facebook group. That Facebook group is great because you can just, you know, ask any question and multiple people have gotten back and answered our questions. People that have been cruising Belize for a long time. Um, and the group is small enough so that you don't get a lot of those people that are just jerks and basically are gonna give you a hard time no matter what question you ask. So it, and so in our research, we discovered that the best free diving in Belize, for the most part, people seem to say, is the, the offshore atolls. And then on top of that, the Sapodilla Keys. So the Sapodillas are unique because they're not offshore like the atolls are, but they are at the very end of the reef system here in Belize. And so they're surrounded by deep water on three sides. And so that goes a long way in, you know, allowing for a lot of marine life as well as clear water. Hey buddy. Hey bud. What, what you doing there? I'm playing my new ASA sailing challenge game. I'm having a little bit of really old Nutella. And you're not feeling guilty about it at all? Nope. Ready? Hago lo que quiero. Wow. We are heading for Northeast Sapodilla K right here. Basically the approach that we're going to have to take is in between reef right here, coral, and then coral or shoaling right here. So you gotta kind of snake right in between. We can either anchor here in this kind of larger, easier to access anchorage, or since Atticus doesn't draw very much, this is six feet in here, and we could get in there right off the beach, which would be fun, and we'd have really good protection from the north, which we've been getting a lot of north winds lately. But you've got this shoal or this bar here. I think it might even be rocks. And so we would have to not drag. <laughs> but I, I think it would be a fun challenge for us. We might give that a go. Man, it is just such a beautiful day out here. It's crazy. You know, cruising doesn't make your life better. Cruising makes your highs higher and your lows lower. So it literally just broadens the spectrum of your experiences. But something else that I'm realizing is that the other thing that cruising does for me is some days are just beautiful like this and easy and and pleasant and exciting and enjoyable and some days are awful and the weather is terrible and scary and you're worried that everything you own is gonna you know sink to the bottom i think that cruising brings you closer to the raw truth of reality which is sometimes really good th things happen and sometimes really really bad things happen i guess cruising is actively accepting that fact and rolling with it and running with it instead of trying to hide from it today is one of those good days <laughs> and uh i'm loving every second of it So here's the five islands of the Sapodilla Keys, and we're going to this one right here, Northeast Sapodilla. Something that's really helpful with uh, you know navigating through areas like this that aren't charted very well is if you have an approach waypoint. So here's 
uh, Rauscher's approach waypoint right there. She's got the Latin long. And I put that into our GPS. So that's where we're heading now. And you can see the GPS doesn't have hardly any information on this area. So what's helpful is she's got this waypoint and then she says from that waypoint, if you point directly at the right end or the south end of the island, you'll make it right through the brief that's on your right and on your left. And not only that, but you'll be on a course to just wrap right around this air, this this shoal if you want to get in close. So we're going to be using that range from that waypoint to the end of the island. And uh, the island is coming up here pretty quick. Okay, so there you can definitely see is some shoaling and some reef. And then same over there right between us and that island. But yeah, right through here definitely looks clear to me. Somewhere up ahead must be where those rocks are. And I think that's just a little too close to the island. What do you think? Do you want to try that little lagoon over there? Uh, seems like it'd be super cool, um, but at the same time, I think it'd be a good idea to check it out with Little Ship first. Also, because if we are that close to land, there might be a lot of mosquitoes. This All is right. really cool, though. Yeah, the cool little tiny lagoon. Well, it is super freaking hot right now, so we are going to hop in the water, dive on the anchor, and then probably swim to the island and check it out. Under the palm trees in the California sun Sand underneath our feet, the morning's just begun I don't remember This thing's going nowhere. I used to think that grassy bottoms were not the best, but out here near a reef, a lot of times if it's sand, it's sand because it's such a thin layer of sand that the grass can't even grow. So I found a lot of times around the reef here in Belize, the grassy areas that aren't like super thick, that's like the best spots because that's actually like soft enough bottom, like a deep soft layer where the grass actually has room for roots to grow. I don't care about what you've done Oh, I wish that you could stay I don't know how it's gonna be But it's gonna be you and me From the look in your eyes You need to get away But I'll make you promise me That you'll come back someday Let's make the most of it I remember what you said Up in the ferris wheel We're kissing in the shades Oh, I wish that you could stay time to kick back and watch a sunset and have a beer. <laughs> or cook. <laughs> yeah, or some people have to cook. Look, look. Why don't you come up here for a second and have some wine? Well, what'd you think of uh, the Sapodillas? Really pretty. It was fun to just explore. We swam for like two hours. Yeah. That was really fun. This is probably the happiest we'll be here. You know, the way that our brains work, I think. Everything's so exciting and new. We haven't formed patterns yet of what everything looks like. Yeah. So we're stimulated and just like on this wave of like bliss and happiness. But give us a couple days and we'll probably kind of settle back into that. Normalcy. Yeah. I guess the only lesson there is just try to make sure we enjoy 
this evening. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think I'm gonna make some, I'm gonna try to make Belizean stewed chicken. Oh. Ooh. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> and watch what movie? I'm watching Legends of the Fall. Yeah. <laughs> well, beautiful sunset, buddy. Mm -hmm. Cheers. To the last place we'll be in Belize and to an enjoyable beginning of our cruising career. Yeah. Can you believe we're actually doing it? I still, I don't know when it's, when that feeling is going to go away. <laughs> fun cooking there buddy oh my god so much fun <laughs> love it oh come on Ugh. I'm just so hot I just I just want to make out with like, like my brother-in-law because like I'm just Please. very attractive no, no, no. I just I can't you. help myself yeah keep telling yourself that keep telling yourself that woman <laughs> <laughs>